Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and today we're going to be talking about how to fly an FPV quadcopter. This is going to be the first video of an entire series on learning how to fly an FPV uh, quadcopter, freestyle quad, uh, racing drone, that type of thing. We're not talking about DJI camera type stuff that basically flies itself. We're talking like you are the pilot and in control of the quadcopter. In this video, we're gonna cover concepts like uh, flight controls, flight modes, the camera angle, and a, I'll give you a flight demonstration so that we're on the same page with things and we sort of have a knowledge base to work from. And then in the next few videos, we're gonna be talking about the actual hands-on flying part of how to hover, how to take off. And we're really gonna go into detail and take our time with this. So first of all, don't worry if you feel a little overwhelmed or if you feel like things are difficult and, and just not intuitive at first, cause it does take practice, okay? I'm right there with you. It took me quite a while really to get comfortable to, the, to do the type of flying that I do right now. And by the way, I am not an expert pilot. Um, I would say I'm an intermediate pilot, so I can, for the most part, get my quad to do what I want it to do. But, uh, you know, I'm not a, a pro racer or anything like that. As you can see, we're here in the liftoff flight simulator. This is one of the uh, flight simulators that I use. I also like the DRL, uh, the Drone Racing League flight simulator. But that is the first thing is get a flight simulator because it will really save you a lot of time and a lot of money. And even if you get something like an app that you can use on your phone or your tablet, that will still be a really big help into getting your mind around the whole FPV flying experience. So with that said, let's jump into the controls. And so for that, what we're gonna do is on liftoff, we're gonna go into the controls section and click on controller. Now in this section, it's really, it's supposed to be you know for calibrating your uh, transmitter. And I'm gonna use the term transmitter and controller interchangeably at times, okay? And so this section is for calibrating your transmitter with the simulator, but you can see this quadcopter here. We have this nice little, in fact, let me move myself out of the way. Woo! Well, there we go. Let me move myself so you can see that. So we have this nice little diagram of the quadcopter. So here's how the controls work. The sticks, when I say sticks, we're talking about these, you see those two lit up circles and the, and the, the, the sticks, the sort of the control knob things sticking out. Those are called the sticks. And so you have your left stick and you have your right stick. Now, most commonly, you, you're gonna have your throttle and your yaw on your left stick, and then you have your pitch and your roll on your right stick. Now, let's talk about those things. The way that we actually get our quadcopter to do what we want it to do is we use these sticks, and we have four different functions across all the sticks to get the quad to work how we want it to. So let's start with our left stick. First, we have throttle. Now, throttle, that's pretty easy to understand. Um, it brings it, it speeds up the motors when we have when we bring the stick up or you or you could say forward depending on the orientation of the transmitter and that's going to be you know all the way to the top is max speed and all the way to the bottom is where you're going to have minimum speed and minimum motor speed because the motor actually spinning faster is going to give you more thrust and make your quad go faster in a way you could say that the throttle controls the up and down aspect of the quadcopter. Now on that same stick, we have what we call yaw. And so that rotates the quadcopter left and right. So it's kind of like the quadcopter sitting there flat and we rotate it left, we rotate it right. Maybe one way of helping you uh, think about this or remember this is if you kind of imagine like your head is the quadcopter or maybe you're like sitting inside the quadcopter. If you were to uh, rotate your head left and right, kind of like you're shaking your head, no, that is yaw. And on the other stick, we have pitch and we have roll. And so roll is like if we're tilting our head left and right, and that's what it's gonna look like in the FPV camera. And then we have pitch. So pitch forward, moving the stick forward or in the upward direction is going to tilt the quadcopter forward. And so kind of pointing the nose down. So think of like your nose and you tilt your head down. That is how the quadcopter is going to move. And the opposite, when we pitch back, we tilt our head up. And we say pitch because that's just kind of what, what the term is for, for sort of like a forward tilting motion in kind of the aviation RC community. So we say pitch. So you might hear me say pitching forward or pitching backwards, that type of thing. 
Now, at this point, I do want to say that uh, this little demonstration is really great, but it doesn't actually show you how the quad is going to behave when we're flying in what's called acro mode, which is typically how people fly racing drones, freestyle drones, that type of thing. So in acro mode, um, instead of the quadcopter returning to center, you will have complete control over the quadcopter. So, and you'll see this in just a second when I demonstrate it. Um, if I were to roll the quadcopter to the right, the quadcopter will keep spinning. It will keep spinning. It will not just stop like that. So if you're in auto level mode, it will. But we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, now let's do a little flight demonstration and show you all of these things in flight. And one more thing worth mentioning really quickly is the FPV camera. So you probably know that these quadcopters have what's called an FPV camera or a first person view camera. And that's kind of the whole point. That's how you see where the quadcopter is going. Now on this quadcopter here that you see on the screen, it's that small camera that's sort of built into the quadcopter. That is the FPV uh, camera just below the action camera. So just in case you're wondering, typically you cannot actually see uh, with the same quality that you would record with a GoPro because the GoPro is strapped on top of the quadcopter and the FPV camera is what you're actually looking through in order to fly the quadcopter. Just know that the quadcopter camera is tilted at an upward angle. Now, the reason why that matters is because when the quadcopter is level, the camera will be tilted upward and it, things will look kind of weird until you tilt the quadcopter forward and then things will look normal. And I have a whole video talking just about the effects of upward tilt on your FPV camera. And I will have that video in this playlist for the flight tutorial series for you to learn more about. All right, so here we are ready to fly. A couple things first, you'll notice in the top left corner, it says acro. Um, and then in the, and that's the mode we're in, acro mode. In the top right corner, we have our altitude and our speed. And then in the uh, bottom center, you'll see those, uh, those sticks, the, the, the sticks overlay. So each little dot represents one of the sticks. So I have my pitch and then I have my roll, and then I have my throttle, and my yaw, like that. So that's really helpful as we're learning uh, how to fly, so then you can see what I'm doing with my transmitter, so that gives you a good idea of kind of how to move the sticks in order to fly the quadcopter. So like I was saying, with the camera up tilt, you can see we're kind of pointed up at the sky. If you look at the very center of the, of the screen there, which is kind of your your aiming point sort of if you can sort of imagine the center of, of the of the screen so i'm actually going to use the uh down arrows on my keyboard to lower the camera tilt to let's say 20 degrees that's probably a good starting number so you can see now we're really seeing a lot more of the ground and also the propellers on either side of the camera so let's go ahead and uh take off here and again we're going to get into more of this and actually break this down. But first, let me give you kind of a flight demonstration, uh, just flying around a little bit. So like we were talking about with acro mode, acro mode means that I could, I can, um, you'll see my stick, my right stick is centered and I can, let's roll, I can roll it a little bit and then the stick will come back to center, like physically it will, it will spring back to center, but the quadcopter just stays where it is. So here's another view for you. So this is kind of what the what the quadcopter is showing, and the game actually won't let me. Uh, it won't let me fly that far away. So that's why <laughs> that's why it, it brought me back to uh, to restart. And acro mode is great because you can do rolls. Um, you can do them as slow as or as fast as you would like. So acro mode is going to be essential for any type of like aerobatic or I guess acrobatic flying. So if you want to, to be able to do tricks, you want to do split S's, you want to be able to do fast turns, you want to be able to fly fast. The other thing is that you can even just let the controls go once you have sort of maintained like a, a sort of a cruise speed and you can just let the controls go and the quad will maintain that uh, angle and that speed and everything. So here's what it looks like. I'm adjusting it a little bit so I didn't hit the building, but that's that's how it is. So our quadcopter will pretty much just fly along uh, very happy once we set those uh, controls like that. So you have a lot more freedom uh, compared to angle mode. So to, to change that, let's, let's, uh, let's see, here we go, level. So notice in the top right hand corner, I just changed the mode by pressing the A uh, key. And so this is what angle mode is going to be like. So notice I can I can tilt forward 
I can pitch forward. Um, but as soon as I let go of the stick, it will return to center, and so will my quadcopter. And that can be okay um, for some purposes, but if you want to fly smoothly, if you want to have more control over the quadcopter, it, it's, it's not so great. And then a lot of times you'll also find that... Um, you know, well, you have to hold the stick forward, and then if you let go of the stick, you know, you just you pitch back. And and if you're trying to film anything like that, unless your camera is, is mounted on a gimbal, it's going to look really horrible because you're going to have this kind of thing going on like a lot. So um, it is good for some types of flying, but typically you're going to want to fly in acro mode. And there's a little bit more of a learning curve, but once you learn it it's well worth it. One more thing that I want to mention here that it, it's not super obvious in this simulation, but um, and that is the camera uh, field of view and fisheye effect because it's kind of like, you know, generally if you have a really wide field of view, that is good because otherwise um, it can be really hard to, to see things in your peripheral vision and basically you, it's like you're looking down a, a tunnel and that's very difficult for flying because you maybe you want to get you know fly really close to something and you want to be able to kind of see out of the corner of your eye you know where where something is as a reference so um, a large field of view is very good um, and you can actually change that in the simulator here uh, right here and no wait back let's go to graphics options so you can actually change the fpv lens size so check this out so you see like if you if you had something like 90 degrees field of view this is very difficult to fly because look how much we're losing and if i pull back to uh 120 120 degrees it's much better now they do sort of have a fisheye option but it sort of makes it look like you're looking through goggles which is kind of weird but just for the just for the example here let's let's take a look at that so uh so the fisheye thing the thing about the fisheye is like things that are farther away from you or no things in front of you will look farther away and things to the left or right like close to you will look really distorted you see how that how bent that tree looks on my on my left looks very strange so that that's just something to keep in mind it will feel like you're going really fast and um, if you have too much fisheye, that can be, you know, that can be bad. But typically, like if you, uh, typically the trade-off to having a large field of view is you're going to have a more fisheye effect because it's kind of like you're trying to cram all of that uh, image into your goggles and into that same screen and the same uh, same lens kind of size. Let's get rid of the fisheye thing. Let's get back here. So again, in flight, the, I'm using just my throttle to increase my altitude. If I yaw, it will sort of spin or rotate the quad like this. Okay, and if I use my roll, it will sort of I'll sort of tilt my head left and right, and pitch will point me down, pitch back will point me up. And I know that might seem kind of weird to some people, um, depending on how they're used to having like a, a, a computer mouse but it, just give it some time and practice and you will get used to them okay so there you go folks those are some kind of basic concepts um, to keep in mind when learning how to fly fpv i know we didn't cover like probably what you wanted to which was like how to just rip around and be awesome but we will get there i promise in the next video we're going to go into actually how to take off and hover and actually fly the quadcopter thanks for watching everybody and i will see you again very soon in the next flight tutorial video